Hi everybody, it's Professor Mitchell continuing with chapter six. In this video, we'll look at section 6.2 on assignment of probabilities. In this section, we'll look at the probability of an outcome, experimental probability, fundamental properties of probabilities, the addition principle, the inclusion exclusion principle, and finally odds. Let a sample space S consist of a finite number of outcomes, S1, S2, all the way up to S sub N. To each outcome, we associate a number called the probability of the outcome, which represents the relative likelihood that the outcome will occur. A chart showing the outcomes and the assigned probability is called the probability distribution for the experiment. For example, if you toss an unbiased coin and observe the side that faces upward, let's determine the probability distribution for this experiment. All right, so in this experiment, uh, there are two outcomes, heads and tails. And because those outcomes are equally likely, uh, each outcome would have probability one half. Let a sample space S consist of a finite number of outcomes, S1, S2, all the way up to S sub N. The relative frequency or experimental probability of each outcome is calculated after many trials. The experimental probability could be different for a different set of trials and different from the probability of the events. For example, traffic engineers measure the volume of traffic on a major highway during rush hour. Generate a probability distribution using the data generated over 300 consecutive weekdays. And you can see that table here. On 30 different days, there were less than or equal to 1,000 cars observed. On 45 different days, there were 1,001 to 3,000 cars observed, and so on. We will use the experimental probability for the distribution. So all you have to do is just divide each of the observed frequencies by the total number of observations, which is 300. And that gives you the experimental probabilities that you see here. The, the probability of outcome S1 is 0 0.10. The probability of outcome S2 is 0.15 and so on. Now on to fundamental properties of probabilities. Let an experiment have outcomes S1, S2, all the way up to S sub n, with respective probabilities P1, P2, all the way up to P sub n. Then the numbers P1 through P sub n must satisfy two basic properties. First, that each of those numbers, P1 through P sub n, is between zero and one. And second, that all of those numbers, P1 through P sub n, have to add up to one. And I wanna emphasize that this first one is a really important one to keep in mind because one thing that I find when I am uh, sometimes grading probability questions is that people will write down probabilities that are, uh, they'll, they'll write down answers to probability questions that are not probabilities. Usually uh, it's a number that's greater than one, <clears throat> uh, but it also can't be negative. So let's verify the fundamental properties for this distribution that we were just looking at. First, we wanna verify that each of these decimals here is between zero and one, and you can see that they are. And second, we need to make sure that those numbers all add up to one. And it's pretty easy to check that they do. And that brings us to the addition principle. Suppose that an event E consists of the finite number of outcomes S, T, U, all the way through Z. That is the event E 
has as its elements S, T, U, all the way up to Z. Note that there could be any number of elements there as long as it's finite. Then the probability of E is found by adding the probabilities of all of those individual outcomes, uh, probability of S plus probability of T all the way up to probability of Z. Okay, and I just caught the typo that was about to happen on that last line. For some reason, they had an A here, uh, <laughs> where the probability of E is just that. It's the probability of event E. This is how we write it. And this is going to be a struggle for me because in every other class that I teach um, that deals with probability, they usually just use the letter P. Uh, so if you ever catch me writing something like P of E or P of A, um, I almost definitely mean the probability. All right. I will try to remember that in this course we use PR instead of just P. For example, suppose that we toss a red die and a green die and observe the numbers on the sides that face upward the way that you normally use dice. First, let's calculate the probabilities of the elementary events, in other words, the individual outcomes. And then we'll calculate the probability that the two dice show the same number. So remember in the last section, we found that the sample space for this experiment consists of 36 pairs of numbers. And since each of those pairs is equally likely to occur, that means we should assign probability 1 over 36 to each pair. Also in the last section, uh, we found that the outcomes that were in this event, that the two uh, dice show the same number, consists of these six outcomes. So according to the um, rule that we were just looking at, that means that the probability of this event would be 1 over 36 plus 1 over 36, a total of six times, which gives you 6 over 36, which simplifies to 1 sixth. So what this means is that if you were to roll a pair of dice many, 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 many times, about one time out of every six, you could expect to roll doubles. All right, next is the inclusion exclusion principle. We had uh, something very similar to this in chapter five for sets. If E and F are any events, then the probability of E union F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F minus the probability of E intersect F. The chapter five version of this talked about the number of elements in each of those sets. <clears throat> Remember that if two events are mutually exclusive, that means that those two events have no outcomes in common, <clears throat> in which case this probability here would be zero because E intersect F would be the empty set. So in that case, the formula simplifies to probability of E union F is equal to the probability of E plus the probability of F. All right, so as an example of that, a factory needs two raw materials. The probability of not having an adequate supply of material A is 0 0.05, and the probability of not having an adequate supply of material B is 0 0.03. A study determines that the probability of a shortage of both materials is 0 0.01. And the question is, what proportion of the time Will the factory not be able to operate from lack of materials? And by that, they mean what proportion of the time will they run out of at least one of these two materials? All right, so that's an example of the inclusion exclusion principle. The probability of A is 0.05, the probability of B is 0.03. <clears throat> and the probability of A intersect B is 0 0.01. So using that formula, we find that the probability of A union B is 0 
A union B means that either A or B or both occurs. In other words, we run out of at least one of these materials. The factory will not operate 7% of the time. Therefore, the factory can expect to operate 93% of the time. And finally, that brings us to odds. If the odds in favor of an event E are A to B, what that means is that the probability of E is A over A plus B, and therefore the probability of E complement is B over A plus B. <clears throat> if the probability of E is equal to P, the number P, then the odds in favor of E are found by reducing the fraction P over one minus P to the form A over B, where A and B are integers, having no common divisor. In other words, the, fa the fraction is simplified. Then the odds in favor of E are A to B. Okay, so that's one of those things that sounds like a bunch of gibberish until you see an example. So let's look at this example. In the two dice problem, what are the odds of rolling a pair with the same number on the faces? So we found a little while ago that the probability of obtaining a pair with the same number on the faces is one sixth, which means that the probability of not obtaining a pair with the same number on the faces is five six, just one minus one sixth. So the odds are one sixth over five six, which can be rewritten as one fifth. And therefore, if you wanted to express this as odds, you would write one to five. And that does it for this section. A probability distribution for a finite sample space associates a probability with each outcome of the sample space. Each probability is a number between zero and one, and the sum of the probabilities is one. The probability of an event is the sum of the probabilities of the outcomes in that event. The inclusion exclusion principle states that the probability of the union of two events is the sum of the probabilities of the events minus the probability of their intersection. If the two events are mutually exclusive, the probability of the union is just the sum of the probabilities of the events. And finally, we say that the odds in favor of an event are A to B if the probability of the event is A over A plus B. Intuitively, the event is expected to occur A times for every B times it does not occur. And that's gonna do it for section 6.2. We will see you next time.